Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to show you how to make a bib apron. You can buy any bib apron pattern that you like. They're available everywhere. But I'll show you how to custom fit that bib apron to anyone. So let's take a look at the apron I'm making for my husband. This particular apron was made out of using panel fabric and I'll show you in a moment what panel fabric is but you don't have to use panel fabric you can use any fabric that you like it's also lined the amount of fabric you will need will depend upon how large you're going to make it so once you get your pattern made you can just take it to the fabric store and have them help you measure for your f amount of yardage You'll notice on each side of this panel fabric, there's a strip that you could use for the neck strap or you could use it for the waist ties. It's really up to you how you want to use them. If you want to leave it in the panel piece, you can also do that. So this is a nice large piece and it's going to fit my husband Manny really well. I found this uh, fabric panel at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts in a little clearance box near the front of the store. And on the back of the package, it had this displayed. And these are suggested projects you could make out of this fabric panel. And of course, they show an apron on there. If you want to look at their pattern version, you can go to their website, Fabric creations.com. This is the fabric pattern that I'm using. I purchased it at Walmart. Keep in mind not all Walmart stores sell fabric and craft items, but at my particular Walmart they do and they have a pretty good size selection of patterns. This one though I purchased a few years ago and they don't carry this one anymore. They've since gone to another brand but they do carry apron patterns there. You can purchase apron patterns at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and you can even purchase them on the internet. So I'll show you how to take your pattern and make it to the size that you want. To determine how much you need to add to the pattern or subtract from the pattern, place this center straight line right here on the center of your body and then determine how much you need to add at the top or how much you need to take away. Then take the pattern and wrap it around to the side to determine how much you need to add or take away. I needed to add four inches at the top of the bib. So I drew a line straight across this way. Then along the area that's under the armpit, I had to add about two inches. So I traced around this way. And you can use your little ruler to just keep moving it until you get it in the right position. On the side, I needed to add just a little under two inches. To make this curved part at the bottom outside corner of the apron, just place your pattern down there and go ahead and trace around it. Now, if your pattern has just a straight corner, it doesn't, it's not curved, and you want to curve it, then just take anything round. This is just a circle template that I have, or a bowl, or anything round, and just trace around it to get your curved corners. After you're done making your pattern, I suggest that you mark the different areas. This is the bib or chest area. Mark on the center seam area, this is the fold line. So your fabric is going to be folded when you cut this out. And then, if you're making it for someone special other than yourself, I would put their name on it. Fold your panel fabric in half, and then lay your pattern on top. I like to use these heavy weights I bought in Home Depot. I don't know what you call these things, but you just go in where they sell all the nuts and bolts, and you'll find things like this in different shapes that you can use as weights. Also, if you have these magnetic pin pads, 
You can also use these to set down on your pattern. I don't like pinning my patterns. I feel it distorts it and then it tears the pattern. So I like to just place the weights. And then I also like using a rotary cutter to cut my patterns out. I don't use scissors because this is much faster. So just go ahead and cut around the edge of your pattern. Use the same pattern to cut your lining fabric out. I'm using just a light cream fabric for the back, but you can use whatever you want. Whatever panel fabric you're using, just pick some colors that would go well with that fabric. You have a few options to make your straps. You can make them out of some fabric that you have. Cut out at least three strips that are three inches wide. Or if you want, you can use bias tape for your straps. So there's quarter inch here and there's also half inch. When I mentioned that you needed three strips of fabric for your waist ties and the neck strap, one of the easiest ways to cut your fabric is to leave your fabric folded with the selvage edges together and then cut from the folded edge to the selvage edges, cutting your strips. It's much faster. So most strips are gonna be about 42 inches long. Here's how you would press your strips. Fold on two of them only. Fold the edge over at one end only, a quarter of an inch, and press it. Then fold your strip in half like this and press all the way down and unfold it. Bring the edge to that fold center line here and press. Bring the other one in and do the same thing. Then fold it in half and press all the way down. On the two straps where you folded the end in one quarter inch, you're going to stitch across that end and then stitch along this edge here so you close up the strap. And you do that on both of your straps. On the strap for the neck, all you have to do is just stitch along this edge here to close the strap up. Take the neck strap and place it around the individual's neck you're making it for. And take one end and place it where you want it to touch the bib. Then take the other end and place a pin the same distance, and then you would trim the excess off. Take the neck strap and place it about one inch away from this edge here over and align it up on this raw edge. Do it on both sides and place a pin to hold. Make sure your neck strap is not twisted. Place the waist ties also on the front side of your apron fabric. Place it one inch down from this edge here and place the raw edge of the strap up against the raw edge here and place a pin to hold. And do that on both sides of the apron. Take your lining fabric and you're gonna bring front sides of your fabrics together. So front side means pretty side or top side of the fabric. Bring them together and then place pins around all the edges to hold the fabric together. On one area, you want to indicate uh, where it will be left open, where you will not stitch over it. This opening is used so that you can turn it front side out. So usually when I start stitching, I start stitching on this side of the opening and I'll stitch all the way around and then I will end here. So that I can remember that this is where I need to end, I'll place two pins there. So always back stitch on each side of your opening. So you're gonna stitch a one quarter inch seam all the way around, but make sure you don't stitch over your opening. After you finish stitching, then at all of your sharp, sharp corners like this, you want to trim a little bit of it off. Cut it down to about an eighth of an inch wide. So I like using a rotary cutter, but you can use scissors. And I'm just going to trim a little bit off, and then a little bit on this side, and then a little bit on this other side. So do that on all of your sharp corners. 
On the two curved areas under the armpit, you want to do little slits, cut little slits like that. Make sure you don't cut through your stitch line, but you're clipping up fairly close to the stitch line. You're also going to do these little two, uh, or these clips, on the two lower corners of the apron where it's curved. When you do these little cut slits, it helps to make those curves lay really flat. Reach in the opening and begin turning it front side out. Press all of your outer edges flat and then at the opening fold the edges in a quarter of an inch and press that also. Then place pins across the opening to keep it closed. Then at your sewing machine you're going to stitch close to the edge all the way around the edge of the entire apron. So here is Manny once again showing you the apron. Watch you turn around, hun, so they can see what it looks like in the back. You'll notice that I couldn't cut the fabric off of the sides to use those as straps because I wanted to make sure there was plenty to go around him. And thank you so much, Manny. You're really sweet to do this for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. If you're interested in making other apron patterns, check below your YouTube screen for the video links. And you'll also see a link down there for children's aprons. Also, beginner sewing projects in general, I have many of them. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.